Well, good morning and good afternoon, wherever you are, traders. My name is Thomas T. Ryan, and uh, we publish a daily newsletter of trading opportunities, both weekly trades and daily time frame trades. Comes out 200 trading days a year. If you've been watching some of our videos here on uh, YouTube, you know uh, basically how we do it. We're basically uh, swing trend traders. Uh, occasionally we do some uh, overbought, oversold counter trades, which we are doing right now. And there are the statistics for our year to date up at the top of this screen, as miserable as they are. I'm probably one of the only people on the whole internet of uh, traders that'll show you an actual tracking number for uh, our trades year to date. But we're making good progress here, at least on the daily trades uh, of recent uh, as we switched over into more of this range trading environment here and and doing some uh, overbought, oversolds, um, counter trades. So we're coming back a little bit there and uh, we have some uh, unrecognized profits that are still sitting in some of our open positions. Um, right now, we uh, I, I've had a couple of people ask me, um, how do I do this screen setup on TC2000? TC2000 is the research platform that I use uh, to find all of our trades. And uh, this one here is O'Reilly uh, Auto Parts, which happens to be a trade that I've done myself. And the, I mean, it's an interesting story. I've been sitting in a short O'Reilly Auto Parts since uh, I think early last spring, uh, somewhere right around in here. Yeah, because I'm, I'm turning into profit today. So I think I got in it right about in here in the early spring, winter last year. This looked like this was gonna head south down here as we were in a serious divergence. It didn't, it ran away from me and I've been sitting on it all the way up to here. But finally earnings came out and uh, the stock is collapsing today. So I'm, you know, I'm into a profitable position now and, and of course happy about that. And the question is, where am I gonna go from here? I'm gonna be holding it. If you look over here, this is the monthly chart. Um, the reason that I was in this trade to begin with was this massive divergence that's going on on the weekly chart and a similar divergence that's been going on on the monthly charts. So O'Reilly uh, Auto Parts has been set up for a fall uh, on top of the fact that, of course, it's had a huge run up over the last several years. It's a terrific company. They've done a terrific job. And um, but, you know, you can see the momentum on this has been accelerating considerably in the last several years. It started all the way back here. And I think this is probably you know, 2010, where it started taking off here. It had a little reset here. Then it accelerated again, not only moving up, but accelerating up. And then here picked up another acceleration. If you follow some traditional Dow theory and some other things, you can see, you know, we've been through three phases of acceleration of growth until it really reached the top up in here where it started to become very unstable. And this was really the last climax top that unfortunately I came in a little bit early on it, but it's, um, it's coming down nicely now. It's down 8% on the day so far after uh, missing. I think they missed earnings only by a penny or so. Anyway, we're going to get into, um, and I'm as an example, of, you know, I'm going to stay in this down to about here, probably 230.78. Uh, we'll get this down into a little bit more of the stochastics here. We'll get down a little bit more oversold. Uh, 230.78 is probably some kind of pivot right about here. Uh, you know, it may pull all the way back down here to this 260. Um, which is another potential pivot that I think I just marked from this point. Yeah, I'm just marking that right here uh, as an intersection potentially of this little jog and the moving average, <clears throat> the 50-month moving average. We'll see if it gets that far. This is an awfully big move. Typically, you see a move like that, you're going to get a little more of a trail, and probably the trail is going to take us down to about 230, I think. So I'm in it now and, and profitable and happy about that after taking, you know, sitting on a lot of losses, which is painful. Um, but but I never took any of the losses. I just sat in the position and uh, You know who knows we may even get this thing down You know down into here if some of these moving averages cross below the 200 day You know that could be more more problems for these guys Anyway, um, I had a couple of folks ask me. How do I set up this screen in TC 2000? And I'm going to show you how I do that. We're going to go to a completely new layout Which is this button right down here click on that. It's going to give you an option for a new layout uh, in my case, uh, I'm going to pick this layout right here, probably most closely resembles. These are all permanent window dividers on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and select that layout. Now, my screen is actually spanned across two monitors. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if I can collapse that for you a little bit here. Yeah, there we go. All right, so I'm going to collapse this over into one screen. So now it looks more like the layout that we just picked, right? All right, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and start with 
a watch list in this top screen, which is what is on my screen is actually what I call a markets watch list. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right there. This one here is actually news. Let's take the corporate calendar of upcoming events. We'll put that in there. And uh, let's uh, move this over here. I'm going to get rid of this window here. I don't I think I may have kept this window for other things, but you can always add it back in again. So I'm going to get rid of that window right there. And then we're going to move this up here so it starts to look more like the screen that you're used to seeing. I actually use this window for different things in some cases, and we'll go ahead and adjust this in a minute. But I also use this to take a quick look at some fundamentals on some stocks. Typically, we are technical traders, but every once in a while, I want to check the fundamentals on a couple of stocks, and I'll show you how we do that in a minute as well. But on the lower screen here, let's go ahead and select a chart, blank chart. There's our blank chart, and there's O'Reilly doing its thing down there, which is fantastic today for me, short on that. Um, now, let's go ahead and set up this chart the way we really want to see it. We're going to edit the chart properties. Chart properties that we always use are candlesticks. We like to see um, the open versus closed change, green versus red. We fill on both of them, fill the up bars, fill the down bars, and we show both today's open and, and uh, yesterday's close on this, on this chart. Those are important points to keep a look at. If you're day trading, you know you, these are all things you want to keep a look at. Uh, you know, if you're long, more long-term swing trading, you know, yesterday's close, today's open, not quite as, as important, but they are important things uh, on day trades. The stocks will frequently uh, bounce, fail to cross uh, those, those numbers. So those are, you know, resistance support points. All right, so let's go ahead and add some more indicators on here. I like to keep the MACD. All right, well, let's start with volume first. Volume is probably most important. We're going to add volume. Then let's add another one. Let's add the MACD. Where's MACD? There's MACD, add that. Let's add the MACD histogram, an important measure of uh, momentum, MACD histogram, right there. Now we're gonna take the MACD histogram and we're gonna move it onto an overlay of the MACD. So those appear on the same screen. And then let's go ahead and add a couple of more here. I like to have the RSI on here as well. And I like to have, you do this all by clicking this green plus sign up here. These are all the hundreds of indicators that uh, TC2000 includes. So uh, let's see, what did I just say? RS on, uh, stochastics. Let's add stochastics in here, right there. And I like to uh, adjust some of these a little bit uh, so that they look a little bit more like the way I usually like to see them. Stochastics, I typically look at more of a 14-day uh, period. So let's look at the 14-period stochastic. Adjust that. RSI is uh, 7, RSI 14, you know. I'm just looking for an overall movement on that, so I don't care that much about it. Let's look at the um, MACD histogram. Let's edit that. MACD histogram I like to have in gray and a little bit in the background. So we're going to fade that out a little bit right there. Okay. And then we're going to do the MACD and we're going to edit that. The MACD, oh, MACD is okay at blue, but the MACD signal line, the exponential moving average nine, we're going to edit that and turn that into red. Okay, so that is now, that is basically our, our chart. That is, that is our standard chart. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and save this chart. Save the chart as I've already set this up, I'm going to call it standard two. Yes. All right, so now comes the easy part. We're going to go ahead and uh, move, uh, create uh, more charts. And I like to have, as you know, the monthly, weekly, daily, hourly, and 10 minute. So let's add standard two again. Let's add standard two again. Let's add standard two again. How many we got there? One, two, three, four. Monthly, weekly, daily, hourly, one minute. And let's go, we need one more. And standard two again. Okay, so now we have all the charts that we need and now we're gonna position them on the page. So let's go ahead and move this over to here. See, it just put it to the left of this one. Let's go ahead and move this one to 
here. Let's go ahead and move this one to here. And we'll go ahead and move this one to here. So there we have all of our basic charts that we need on the screen. I'm going to move this up a little bit up here like that. And um, we're going to now set the time periods. So this one is going to be our monthly. This one is going to be our weekly. This one is going to be in the center of the page. Daily. This one's going to be hourly. And this one is going to be 10 minute. There's the setup. Now, uh, the other thing you want to do is you want to set the view properly, the way you look at these things. So the dominant thing I want to look at, of course, on every one of these is the actual chart itself. So I shrink these guys down. I don't need to see them as large um, as I need to see the chart. So we move that a little bit, move this a lot, move this a lot. And also, to some degree, you know, these are in ranked and relative importance. Volume, of course, is really number one. Um, and then I can stretch that out a little bit more so I get a little bit more of a view. So that is, and then I'm going to go ahead and do that with all of these. I'm going to move this down a little bit, more or less kind of align these guys. Move this down here, this down here. So I got a nice good view of the chart itself. And um, and then this is all going to be automatically saved. All of your settings on TC2000 are saved automatically uh, in the Warden TC2000 servers. They're not, I guess they are also saved on your machine, but more importantly, they're saved on the Warden servers. Um, the other thing you can do, I think is you can adjust that scale a little bit if you want. Oh, and that's another important thing. Let's see. These are arithmetic or logarithmic, percent or fixed. These are all on um, arithmetic scales. Um, so that's, you know, that's your setup. That's how I do it. I, what did that take? Five minutes to do that? Um, and then, of course, you know, over time you can change them any way you like. I sometimes add and subtract indicators when I'm playing around with things. Um, but for the most part, this is... These are all the guys that I use. I don't really mess around too much with any others. Oh, I'm loving that O'Reilly Auto Parts. Just absolutely tanking down there. And you can see on O'Reilly, I've also included these markers on here. These are these are my targets down here, which represent you know potential pivots that are in here. So I'm 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 betting we're going to see O'Reilly go down to about 23078. That would be probably my out, or I'll take at least three quarters of the position and close it out, uh, like we do in the letter. <clears throat> but this is an awfully big bar today, uh, down almost 9% in one day. That's uh, a hell of a, hell of a run. <clears throat> glad, uh, glad I'm on the right side of this one. Oh, and let's do the markets real quick. I'm going to add a symbol up in here. Add a symbol of Dow, Dow Jones 30 Industrials there. Add. Let's add... Um, Composite, NASDAQ Composite Index, add. Let's add uh, SPX. Standard and Poor's 500. Um, let's add the Qs. Sometimes a good thing to keep a, a look at what's going on in the, uh, you know, a major index of, uh, of the text and then we'll change some of these headers in here so that we have really what we're you know what we're looking for really is uh, I don't need this I don't need this thing I need uh, price where is price where are they hiding price Price. So there's price. And uh, let's edit the columns. We'll go over here to edit columns. So I don't need the flag. 
I don't need the track price. I don't need track shares. I don't need track percentage. I don't need track game loss. I don't need date. Don't need any of these things. Stochastics. I keep the volume buzz on there. That's a handy indicator. Um, it gives you a little sense of how active the market is, whether the market is, um, you know, slowing down. Almost always, you'll see in the uh, in the morning, the. Um, oh, and let's do this. Symbol goes up above here. And um, in the morning, you know, you're going to see a heavy volume buzz, uh, lots of activity, and then by about 12 o'clock, you see the whole thing kind of uh, fade out. Um, as you may know on my screen, I've got a ton more fields that I've added over in here, a lot of fundamental fields that have almost nothing to do with the indexes. Um, this is the main thing that I want to, you know, I want to see. I, we can add, let's add change. How about that? Um, where's change? Percent change since open. And you can fool around with this and find, you know, all the things that you want to have. Um, net change since open, net change today. I also like to have the Dow up at the top of the list. So I do a sort on that, I think is how I get that up there. Uh, I don't know how you get that up there, but anyway, you get the rough idea. Uh, NASDAQ is uh, is off a bit. Dow is kind of flat. Um, but that's what's going on in the markets today. And you can change that to any selection of um, indicators, information that you'd like to, you know, you'd like to have on there. Total volume. There's another one that we like to put in there. Volume. Let's see, where's volume? So there you go. So that's the screen. That's how I set it up. And of course, you can add anything you want in there uh, anytime you want. Um, but that's uh, the basic screen uh, that I keep up uh, all day, every day. Thanks for watching.